Welcome back to The Puzzle Detective. Please remember that uh, all of the puzzles that you see featured on The Puzzle Detective are available on The Puzzle Detective website, thepuzzledetective.com, and there are free PDF files there for you to download so that you can join us in solving our puzzles. Let's get back to our square logic grid. We had placed five numbers. Ah, but The Puzzle Detective made one slight oversight when we were placing our first number, which was the letter U, when we placed the 24. Not only should I have placed the 24 in the grid, but we should have also, at the same time, added the 8 and the 16, or the 6 and the 18, I should say, in the appropriate squares. If 24, if U is 24, T then has to be 6. Let's go ahead and put T is 6, and Y is 18. Well, now let's go back up and check on uh, square or clue number three. Three tells us that the four corner squares, A, E, U, and Y, and the center square, M, have to add up to 65. We now have four of those numbers already filled in. We know that A is 11. We know that U is 24. Y is 18. And M is 7. 60. Well, we need the numbers to add up to 65. We now know that our last square has to be 5. By doing so, we now have A, E, U, and Y, and M adding up to 65. What about these numbers over 20? 21 through 25. We have used 21, we've used 22, We've used 24. That leaves only 23 and 25. What does that mean exactly? We now know then that C and S are going to have to be either 23 or 25. 23 or 25. Why is that important? We know that the diagonals are also going to add up to 65 meaning that G is going to have to be either 4 or 6. Let's go back up to our used numbers list. 6 is not available. 6 has already been used in square number T. So we now know that G cannot be 6, therefore it has to be 4. We can eliminate that. And as we said, in order for this to be 4 here, we know that this square S has to be 25. Up here we had either 23 or 25. This then has to be 23. Our final column has all but one of the squares filled in. We can solve O is 14 and cross that off the list. We don't have any further rows or columns at this point that we only have one square available. But on our very first row, row number one, there are two squares open. How can we use this to help solve the puzzle? Let's add up what we have so far. 11, 23, and 5. 39. Once again, we need to use that magic number of 65 for this puzzle and do a little subtraction. We know that these two numbers together have to add up to 26. In order for this row to add up to 65 total, we've used 39 so far. These two remaining squares have to add up to 26. What combinations can we use from up above to fill in and make 26? The only two combinations that will work for B and D are either 17 and 9 or 16 and 10. This is where clue number 5 comes into play. We know that number 5, the squares B, H, and Q contain consecutive odd numbers in descending order. Well, what are the descending numbers for B, H, and Q? Only three odd numbers, consecutive odd numbers, will work that will fit this particular criteria. We know that they ha it has to be an odd number. We can eliminate the even numbers. 16 and 10. Would 9 work? 
Can we get three consecutive odd numbers for nine? No, because the odd numbers on either side of nine, seven or 11 have already been used. But for 17, we do have a possible combination of odd numbers. 19, 17, 15, or 17, 15, and 13 in descending order. So B is going to have to be 17. Now we can do the math on this. Add the 17 to the 39, 56, and then we now know that this has to be 9. That's our combination 17 and 9 that we talked about. We can eliminate 17 and 9 from, uh, from that particular combination. Now, what does that mean? Well, we know that we have descending odd numbers B, H, and Q. If 17 if B is 17, in descending order, H would then have to be 15, and Q would have to be 13. Let's go ahead and fill those in. H is 15, and Q is 13. That helps a lot, because we now have a lot of squares available where we have only one remaining number to fill in. If we look at this particular column here, column number 2, we can do the math on that very easily. We now know that V has to be 10. Similarly, we now have a diagonal, our other diagonal, with only one square available. That leaves 16 here. Do you see where we're going with this now? Row number 2 has only one number remaining. 57 are the numbers that add up here. That leaves us with 8. For our remaining rows and columns, we don't have those nice, neat little columns and rows where there's only one number remaining. But let's, for example, take a look at our next row here. We have 21, 7, and 14. A little quick math gives us 42. In order to reach 65, we're going to have to get a combination of numbers that add up to 23. Well. 20 and 3 will work, 19 and 4 cannot work because we've already used 4, and so 20 and 3 are really th is the only combination that can possibly work, meaning this has to be 3 or 20, 3 or 20. Now that we look at this particular column, let's do some quick math. If we take 9, 16, and 25, the numbers that we know for sure work here, and do some quick math, that gives us 50, meaning our other numbers have to add up to 15 to reach that target number of 65. Well, 20 clearly puts us over the limit, meaning that n then has to be 3. And to get 15, this would have to be 12. Since we've eliminated 3, k will have to be 20. We now have four of the numbers here. P then has to be 2, and these two numbers become quite obvious here as to how we have to fill those in. 19 will give us the 65, leaving the 1 at the bottom. And we can double check that. 24 and 10 is 34, 1 is 35, 12 makes 47, and 18 makes that magical number 65. And with that, we have completed our square logic puzzle. We'll be right back with more of the Puzzle Detective right after this. Every chess situation is a puzzle waiting to be solved. Here is today's Puzzle Detective chess puzzle. White to play, mate in one. Do you see it? I'll reveal the answer when we come back. 